sale. I think you need to go down and into the kitchen. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> well, we don't call ourselves Gone with the Winds for nothing because, man, are we gone to a lot of places lately, and this one was very unexpected. We are aboard Destination, a 120-foot sailboat. You know, I thought the 88 was going to be the biggest thing. Nope. 135. Correction, 135 foot <laughs> sailboat. We thought the 88 was big. We just keep growing. Anyway, in for quite an adventure today, and uh, we've got some familiar faces, which is how we got on this boat. Captain Mike, who we met in New Zealand, he helped us put our mainsail and new Genoa on whenever we got those. And of course, you've met his kids. Are you so glad you came over? It's magical. Well, now we're. We're here aboard. Yeah. <laughs> A play. <laughs> What am I looking at? It looks like a computer game. So everything is controlled from back here. So we have the head sills all on these three controls here. Balanced stern thruster, don't need those now. Main sheet is these ones. And then these are just little buttons for locks and heli tension and stuff like that. Simple, push a button, moves. Push a button and it moves. Once you're sailing, you want to feather the propeller so it goes in line with the water. And yeah, there is a bit of glass going there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then we just we pick up probably about a knot and a half with that. Wow, a knot and a half with the, just feathering the prop. Yeah. I assume it's a massive prop. Yeah, it's 1.2 meters. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. What is it in your terms? Yeah. Exactly. Four feet. Four feet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're properly sailing. 15 knots of breeze. 15 knots of breeze. What's our speed? At the moment we're only 10, but building. So. Okay. Wow, we are leaning pretty oh, good. <laughs> Ideal heel 10, 15 degrees is comfortable. What is this? 12? Uh, yeah, probably 12, 15, something like that. So this is the comfort zone? Yeah. Sort of getting up to 12 knots and... <laughs> it's, it's nice view on that side. Okay, I'm gonna get the camera. Oh my gosh. I feel so tiny. Just everything is so big. I feel like a little kid on a big kid's toy. Man, and we are moving. This is not messing around. Just incredible. I don't know why, but I'm thinking about the Titanic right now. Bathing suit. Oh my gosh. It is powerful on that side. You're moving a lot of freaking water. Oh, it's so exciting. I mean, this is like an adrenaline rush for sure. It's so different. You would think it would be more intense on a small boat, but it's just a different type of intensity. Like the bigger you go, it's all like, oh, you know, oh, that's what you feel like going through the water. But it's so beautiful and so graceful at the same time. Like just the, the fluidity of everything. I'm loving it. Go dry off your mic. Yeah, very true. Don't break the equipment. So should I bear away a hair more because you're going traveler down? Uh, just keep it there and I'm just sort of taking a bit of the heel off. Okay. Uh, my right leg is already getting, uh, my right calf is burning. You want to sit in the comfortable seat. 
<laughs> you sit here with your foot on there and it's all nice. You can still see the gauge there. Pick a cloud. Okay, I'll switch. It's, and it's really easy. You're almost gonna get 12 knots, 12 yeah. and a half. And you said the beauty of this boat is you can really push her, dip the rails if you want to. Yeah, that's it. Don't just call it a cruising boat. Like it was designed as a fast cruising boat. You can push it hard and do bucket regattas and stuff like that and it sails really well. And it's quite nimble, maneuverable or you can just ease the sails out a bit and just have a nice cruise. Yeah, make it more comfortable for everybody on passage. And, yeah. Destination is a 2003 alloy yacht sloop. And Mike has been the captain aboard this vessel for almost 20 years now. I've never slept in a bed as much as this bed, I think, in my whole life. Wow, so, that's pretty wild to think about. It is, yeah, it's scary to think about. <laughs> <laughs> and he sailed her around the world in almost every direction and latitude. In late 2018, we headed down to Antarctica. So from the Med, we sailed down to Cape Verde, down to Punta Arenas, Antarctica for just after New Year's, and then straight back to New Zealand after that via Tahiti. And he says the aluminum hull and the carbon mast make her incredibly strong. And then all the modern features like in-boom furling, hydraulic captive winches and such, means that she can easily be sailed by one person, which for a boat of this size is impressive. Yeah, it's a good boat. Like it's small enough to still feel like a sailing boat, not a big motorboat or anything like that. So you can go out, enjoy sailing, and you feel like you're on the sea. I really miss it when I'm not at sea. And as luck would have it, Mike sailed destination to the Can Boat Show to meet with some potential new buyers because yes, this boat is for sale. And if you happen to have a cool 12 million burning a hole in your pocket, then this beauty could be yours. And I will happily sign up as crew. I'm just saying. Which speaking of, it does take a crew of about two to six people to run this vessel. And right now they have five on board. There's Captain Mike, whom you've already met. Ella is the mate, Tilo is the engineer, and then there's another Ella who is the steward, and last but arguably the most important crew member, Chef Murray. Going down below. If your port lights are underwater in a catamaran, it is not a good day. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of respect and sympathy for all you monohull sailors out there because moving around in here is, uh, it's like a funny house, which is fun at the moment, but you know, when you're trying to like cook and do everything else, <sighs> respect. Anyway, this is loads of fun. There you go. <laughs> You out my bathroom window. Ooh, yeah. Jason, I think you need to go down and into the kitchen. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> oh, come on, you can do it. One journey down. For, for, he's having a cook down there. Oh, he's cooking down there right now? Yeah, he's still yeah. down there doing stuff. Why don't you just go down there? Because I'm, <laughs> I'd rather hold the camera and follow you because uh, I think it'll be funnier. <laughs> okay, I'll put this camera down. <laughs> Don't break anything. It's a very expensive boat. Don't break anything, don't touch anything. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Yeah. It smells really good. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah. I don't know if I could last down here though. Oh, so it's too bad. No? Too bad. You get used to it? Yeah, do, you ever yeah, get... do about an hour and then I have to go oh. and look at the horizon yeah. reset, but no, that's good. And you can reset in yeah. like 10 minutes or an hour? Yeah, yeah. No, it takes five minutes and then back to normal. So okay. I'm quite lucky about that. Okay. I was just thinking, I was I like, oh, my I forgot best. you were cooking down my, here. My, my favorite tag. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier this way than the other way. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I might have to get an action camera to come down here. I don't know that I can tell how much of a lean you're just actually at, but it is. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Really. You really have to hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go grab the action camera. Camera okay. switch. Try walking down the hallway. <laughs> yeah, that shows it. There's no way you can fake that. Nope. <laughs>
It looks like you're in a funny house. Should we go back up? We should go back up. Yeah. You want me to follow you again? Yeah, if I want to. Yeah. See what happens. You're not the most graceful thing. Thanks. <laughs> The excitement of the lean is real, and it's hard not to wax on about how alive the boat feels. Almost as if it's breathing as it gently leans over to exhale with each puff of wind. Because it's hydraulic? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, that. Okay, now I'm coming up. I need to go over? Yeah. <laughs> it's very different. It's such a different motion than what I'm used to. And obviously the power of this vessel is very different. It's a fun challenge. Kind of getting to feel something new. Trying to find that sweet spot. It's also kind of mesmerizing. I'm sure on a passage you kind of just get into a groove and hours could pass. Odd, it's like relaxing and exciting all at the same time. I just had to point out that this sound that this boat makes going through the water reminds me of like downwind sailing on a catamaran, which is just the best. It's just that nice whoosh, whoosh. I'm gonna try to capture it. Hopefully, the wind's not too loud, but it's just magical. It's yeah, it's my favorite. This, this is pretty special. We're so, so fortunate to be able to come on this boat. So, okay, I'll shut up now. What are you looking for? I'm just watching to make sure that it's feeding on to the drum at the right angle, not coming forward too far or back too far. Okay. I got the shot of you climbing up that mast earlier and it looked like nothing, but now that you're up there and I'm down here, I'm like, wow, it's pretty high. Yeah, you come up here and it looks a lot higher. Like you've done that a couple of times. It's good when it goes smoothly. <laughs> it's like Dracula coming out of the casket. That's the snubber? Yeah, exactly. God, it's a massive line. pretty comical. At least it feels comical. Like I start walking to the aft of the boat and then I get about halfway and I'm like, man, I'm still walking. And then it just keeps going. It's funny, you just like bounce up on our 44 foot catamaran. It's like, boom, you're there. Boom. But here, look, I'm still walking. I haven't even made it to the end yet. It's crazy. And now, <laughs> right? Nuts. So as a captain, what's your biggest pet peeve with other boats when anchoring? The ones that come in at the end and go too close. That's, that's the biggest thing. Give space, right? Yeah. yeah ones, everyone can have as much room as they like. <laughs> Just don't come in and anchor on top of me. Most of these sort of guys are really good. Yeah. Just get the old one there. Isn't it? Just comes in and decides to park yeah. up right next to you. Yeah, they say they're going to stay for an hour and they end up staying for the night. And they sleep well and we don't. So yeah. that's the, the biggest killer. All quiet. 
That's it? <laughs> That's it. Job done. You go for a day like that and you're kind of like, I don't know. Maybe monohull isn't so bad. Maybe you should get a mono. But then you're like, I don't know. It's 130 20, V. 20 days of being at uh, this angle I get, might get a little old. It's awfully exciting though. Hey, come here. Did you see that they have Starlink on this boat? Definitely gonna log on and use their Wi-Fi. But just because this is a fancy super yacht, it doesn't mean we can trust these people. So that's why I'm gonna turn on Surfshark VPN, which is also today's sponsor. Because that innocent looking Ella up there, I mean, she might be a mate by day, but what if she's a hacker at night? Huh? Huh? But if we turn on Surfshark VPN, that it encrypts all of our data and protects us from hackers, even if they're lurking around a super fancy yacht like this one. And if I turn on the clean web feature, then I can surf in a clean cyber ocean with no ads, trackers, malware, or phishing attempts. And of course, because it's a VPN, we can virtually change our IP address to place ourselves anywhere in the world to avoid geo restrictions on apps like Venmo or websites like Netflix. Now, I've got to get back up on deck before they realize that I'm down here just playing around on the internet. But if you want to give Surfshark a try, then use our discount code WINS to get an extra three months for free. And if you're not sure that it's a good tool for you, no worries. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk to try it out. Just click the link down in the description box below or scan the QR code that's on the screen. All right, I'm gonna go back up there. All right, so now that the anchor has been dropped, everybody's getting comfortable. We are going to have a quick bite of lunch because fully crude boat, that's what you do. I can get used to this. <laughs> and then I will give you a tour of this boat because it is stunning. We might go back out again. Oh, are we really? Yeah. I don't, I mean, I'd be all right with that. Oh, I wish it was smell vision It <laughs> smells so good. The one thing you can't have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I can smell it up on deck, like when we were dropping the anchor. So Mike said you do online cooking courses. I do, yeah. Yeah, and, and are you going to do an online cooking course for cruisers? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Oh, I've got one, yeah. Really? Oh, you already have one? It. Yeah. Seriously? Have a look at it and tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. cooking's cooking, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but it is a little different when you're on a boat. Sometimes ingredients are limited and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I think the basics are the same, you know? Oh, of course. You, you learn to cook with what you've got to on the day. That's, you learn how to cook and then relate it to the ingredients that you've got. My philosophy. Yeah. And how long have you been cooking? Twenty-five years. And always on a boat, or all, no, no, all sorts of scenarios. Yeah, I live in the French Alps at the moment, and uh, have done it for them permanently for the last kind of four, five, six years, eight years. Sounds right. Um, so we're based there all year round, and every now and then, we sort of get get out and come and do something fun like this. Yeah. I guess it keeps you sharp on your skills because, you know. You've got to practice, you know. I, I work hard in the winter. Um, we run a hotel for 40 people and another 18 chalets as well. Wow. So we do the cooking for that. And then in the winter and the summer, I relax a little bit more, focus on the, the online cooking. And a few little bits of pieces like this. It's quite nice. Just to mix things up? Yeah, just to keep it interesting. And then do you, I, do you do that because you love sailing? Like, do you like boat life? Or? I, I like Mike's company, you know? <laughs> Mostly. Okay, what are we eating? Uh, chicken satay, fried rice, Asian salad with carrots and courgettes, and, and tofu and satay, I think. One of the tea. <laughs> All right, lunch is over, so now I owe you a tour. Starting with this fancy pants pneumatic door. Works off of air. It feels incredible because it's, it's silent. So this is considered the pilot house. We'll show you the inside nav area later when we go sailing again, but you've got a beautiful table here with lots of detail in the tabletop, which you would not notice at first, but it looks really beautiful in the light. Also worth mentioning, this is a handmade piece out of Bali. There's gonna be a few of those that we see. 
the little, well, no, not very little details, but it is a detail that kind of catches your eye right whenever you walk into the boat. And there's it's made a, from oysters. Is it made from oysters? I didn't get that detail earlier. Oh, well, it's beautiful. It looks, it's very pearlescent, so that makes sense. All right, lovely little lounge area here, and we're gonna go down into the cabin. So we've got owner's cabin and three guest cabins. Maybe we'll save the best for last, which would be the owner's cabin. So this is the smallest, smallest of the three guest cabins, which is still larger than our owner's cabin on our 44 foot vessel. Each cabin has its own ensuite with like heated towel rack, beautiful mirrored sinks, huge showers. You gonna show this? showers you're gonna walk into this is just gonna take an hour if you want okay into all the showers. we won't show that then we won't show all the showers we'll just show the biggest one this feels very i feel like i need victoria and rico here to help me do a proper tour i'll do this for for victoria because she'd be very upset if i didn't open any cabinets to show you wardrobe space a drawer drawer drawers oh my goodness this is just a guest cabin Another ensuite, another huge shower. Oh my goodness. It's like, I mean, these are really nice accommodations. It's like you kind of forget you're on a boat. It definitely doesn't feel like we're on a, on a monohull. Oh yeah, another cabin. Third cabin, nice and big in here. Yeah, it looks just like the other one. Although I came in here earlier and there's a nice little port light here. That's one that was underwater. And this, this is the big reveal. This one is something else. So you've got a nice lounging nook right over here. Huge sofa massive island walk around bed. And then of course, another of these handmade dressers from Bali, must be oyster shell or something similar on this one. Anyway, they're spectacular little pieces of art in here. And then, his and her sink, massive sit down shower with teak bench in there with a port light. So you kind of always have a little bit of a view out. It's a, uh, it's beautiful. Moving on to the salon. Lovely space to watch a movie, sit and read a book on a rainy day, nightcap. This is where the ship's kitty lives. They don't have any mouse problems. Another handmade piece out of Bali. This one is coconut shells. And if you start looking at the detail on this, I don't know who made this table, but it must have taken them 10,000 hours. Everything for owner and guests and everything else is all sort of the, the back half of the ship. The front half of the ship is the crew quarters and the kitchen and everything else. So as you can tell, there is no noise. It is quiet so very quiet on this boat. So you've got all the privacy and everything else. And then you go into the working rooms. All right, now in here, we've got a ladder to go up just in case you need a quick escape washer and dryer. There is a special fridge just for the flowers on this boat. Jason's favorite, the dishwasher, as everybody knows. Little wash up sink here, coming around to the other side. This is Murray's domain. Are we allowed to enter? Yeah, yeah, you can help us out. Okay, so we've got what? Fridge, fridge, freezer, freezer? Or fridge, fridge freezer? Fridge, 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 and the freezer is in the floor. Uh, oh, okay. Freezer's down there which I guess is a good spot for it in the bilge. Oh, there are two extra baskets all the way back there. That's huge. That's a lot of food storage. Okay. Two ovens. Oh, another dishwasher. Oh, see, you'd be fine you on this boat. You know, have enough dishwashers. Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fine, fine. Okay, fine. Jason really wants a dishwasher. It's a microwave. microwave. Got the KitchenAid over there. 
and probably a whole host of toys that. Built yeah. And then moving on into the crew quarters, so dining area for the crew. This is Mike's cabin here. So this is the captain's cabin. Every room has its own ensuite bathroom and shower. Moving on. Ah, nice little monitors here for being able to, you know, switch over, monitor the engine, get the masthead. Lots of fancy technology for monitoring everything. Then we've got bunks here. Nice big shower. Crew cabins on this boat are nicer than our cabins on our boat. Another set of bunks here and another big ensuite. And I think that's the end. We're at the, we're at the very bow of the ship as far as space like this goes but of course we've got the engine room but mike said we have to wait until the engine is on because you need to see it in all its full engine gory. i'll let jason do that one so i think he said she'll let me do the engine room but the truth is <laughs> so i don't know what half the stuff is i mean i know what it is but i don't know what it is down there it's like 10 times larger than what we have in our yacht so Ten might even not be another yeah. factor. <laughs> so come on in, down here. Watch your head. Okay. So what do we have running right now? Just a generator? So right now we just have one generator and water makers and air conditioning. Not much. Yeah. That's not too loud. No. Yeah. So, and that's just this one here. So it's quite well sound shielded. You can open it really loud. Um, so here we have all, like, all our fuel manifold, different tanks, we choose which one we want. Raycore filters? Yep. Just the same as a small boat. How big is the engine? So it's 850 horsepower. We have 30 horsepower, so that's more than 10 times definitely. Yeah. Caterpillar engine, like we've done nearly 20,000 hours on this. Wow. Uh, it's good for the life of the boat. Uh, then we come back down here. This looks like a manifold, but it's not, right? It is, so it's our bilge manifold. Ah. We have a fire pump down here, then we have down the very bottom all the bilge manifold. We can work out which area we want to suck from, which pump, whether it's an engine pump, electric pump. Then we have waste pumps, pneumatic bilge pumps, and then everything goes down this big pipe behind you here, and that's a discharge chest. Before it's discharged, it goes through some sort of cleaning system? Uh, so the bilge system that goes through behind you there, there's an oily water filter, which basically takes out 90% of it and if it's a too high reading it'll put it back in the tank so and then for the waste on this side over here there's a sewage treatment plant which takes the waste turns it into solids and then clean water comes out the other end yeah. and what's that back there in that corner we have two pneumatic compressors that's just for blowing up fenders the doors pop-up dash stuff like that and these two waste pumps here are pneumatic okay. and this is the exhaust yeah so main engine exhaust up here it's not too hot. No, it's not. But if you were to touch that end, it's very hot. Oh, yeah. Probably that much insulation around it. It's like a work of art. Mirrored stainless. Goes up another about a meter. I come down, there's a big fiberglass pot up here, which is all mixed and then dumped out straight out the bottom. So you don't hear it? We don't have any water coming out the back. It's yeah. completely dry. So how do you know it's running okay? You have an engineer okay. to check. You have an engineer here? No. You know your exhaust temperature, if it's too high, yeah. there's no water, yeah. if there's an issue you can smell fiberglass. So. Okay. And then up front we have water maker? Yeah, so on the forward bulkhead up here we have two water makers. Yeah. How okay. many liters of water per? 12,000 liters a day, a day. for both of them. 12,000 liters divided by four, 400 gallons-ish? 4,000. 4,000 gallons? Yeah. Not a lot. <laughs> and then off to the side there is air conditioning, that runs 24-7. We have two of these generators, they're both the same. We only need one on at any one time, except when we're sailing, we can run the other one for hydraulics, bow thruster and fan thruster. If we're parking the boat, we'd have this one on hydraulics, that one on half hydraulics, and then the main engine also supplying power. That allows us to go upwind sideways in 20 knots of breeze. So, makes it easy to park. That's a lot of, yeah. a lot of thrust. Yeah, so, and these are 90 kilowatts each. It's a different world in here. It's it's nice because it's it's pretty spacious to work in. It is fun. Almost enough headroom for some people. Yeah. Not for you. No. Yeah. But I always have a seat. It's good. 
how many gallons or liters of fuel? Either side of us we have 9,000 liters or 9,600 in each tank. So, so what have we got? 18 and a half, 19. And then down aft there's another 4,000 liters. And that's enough to motor from Tahiti to Galapagos or the other way around. So even without sailing. So um, a good range of motor sailing and a bit of sailing you could comfortably do 3,600, 4,000 miles. 4,000 miles, so you don't fill up very often, but no. Mike's gonna kick on the engine in a minute. So now we have earmuffs. So apparently it's pretty intense. Wind speed of 22, doing about 10 and a half. 14 knots of breeze. 14 knots of breeze, true. Yeah. So what are we doing today, Mike? We're just sort of out, having a good time? Yeah, just going for a cruise, letting the boat get used a little bit. They like to keep moving. Checking the sails and making yeah. sure everything's like still functioning and seaworthy. Because yeah. yeah. at a moment's notice, you could be called and say, you have to go to this area or move the boat to here. Or... Yeah, especially like this time of year, it's getting close to the end of the season here. You could be getting to the Caribbean and you want to be underway in a month. So it's always nice to know everything's ready to be used. Well, you keep feeding me like that and we get weather like this, I could stick around for a while. Yep. Give it another month, you don't want to be here. <laughs> uh, it has been an absolutely stunning day. I This probably makes my like, I can't decide, but like our days on, you know, ticket to ride, like that champagne sailing, some of the best sailing I've ever had. And now this is right up there with it. Very different experiences, but this makes the uh, top of my list to some of the best days I've ever had. It's just been so exciting, yet relaxing and, and it's just a beautiful, incredible experience. So I very much enjoyed my day. I hope that you have enjoyed kind of sharing this with us. And uh, I guess I'll leave you on that and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.